Elsha of the Infinite is a very interesting creature, and she's actually from a place that doesn't exist. <music> Greetings! Owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles, we are here today to discuss a newly spoiled card from Commander 2019 that has tickled my interest. I was looking at Elsha of the Infinite and I thought to myself, what an interesting card. Let us take a look at the card and I will explain to you why I find this one interesting and what I meant when I said she is from a place that does not exist. So Elsha of the Infinite is two colorless, one blue, one red, and one white. She's a 3-3 legendary Dijin monk with prowess. Now prowess is an ability that says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. And the main thrust of her ability is you may look at the top card of your library anytime and play it. Obviously it's a, a little... There's some more restrictions than that. So basically, you can look at the top card of your deck anytime you want, and you can cast the top card of your deck if it's a non-creature, non-land card. But you get to actually cast it as if it has flash, which is a nice little tweak. Now, you may notice that um, mechanic-wise, mechanically, the card operates similarly to a couple of cards that currently exist in Magic the Gathering. One of them is... Future Sight. Now, Future Sight is your five cast. It's funny because Future Sight casts cost five, just like Elsha does, but it's heavy blue. It's triple blue, two colorless. Let you look at the top card of your. Actually, not let you look at the top card. Makes you look at the top card of your library. You have to actually play with the top card of your library revealed. So, in a way, Elsha does have the advantage of concealing information for you as well. However, Future Sight does allow you to play the top card of your library as if it was in your hand without any restrictions. Doesn't, doesn't care if it's a land, doesn't care if it's a creature, whatever it is, it's fair game. And to quickly touch on the flavor of the card, this is actually Ixidor examining the multi-paths of his existence. It's some very interesting artwork where you can see different scenes from Ixidor's past and future laid out for him there. It's it's a very, very funky card. The flavor text says, my path holds only pain and loss. I will conquer it by creating the perfect future. You can identify with that. Now, Future Sight's not the only card that you may be thinking ties into Elsha of the Infinite because obviously she's got some heavy vibes of Experimental Frenzy. In fact, if you're a newer player, Experimental Frenzy may be where your mind went right away. This is that, is it enchantment? Uh, is it any good? One red, three colorless. You can look at the top card of your library, so this is more along the same lines as Elsha, and you may play the top card of your library. Now, it doesn't have any restrictions in terms of lands or like the uh, creature aspect, but it does give you a different restriction where you can't play cards from your hand. And Elsha obviously doesn't have that, and neither does Future Sight. So in a way, Elsha is actually a mishmash of Future Sight and Experimental Frenzy with its own tweaks where she has restrictions, but she also has her own benefits. Now, Elsha is really interesting to me for a number of reasons. One, I find that the the Dijin, the Dijin monks of the uh, of the Jeskai are very interesting to me. The Jeskai are very a very funky clan of monks. They're a clan of martial artists, mystic, and monks. They focus on strategy over strength, and that's how you see the prowess ability, where it's basically the more that's going on in terms of casting your non-creature spells, the beefier the creature gets. And you can actually see that in the artwork of Elsha, where she has the uh, the glowing the glowing fists. That to me is establishing the prowess ability. Now, the clan focuses on strategy over strength, planning battles against other clans from remote monasteries in misty mountain lakes. The basis of the Jeskai culture are these isolated mountain strongholds. Each has its own particular schools of thought and fighting style. So if you've watched uh, like kung fu movies with like crane style and tiger style, that's the sort of thing that you're going to be dealing with. Now their their major stronghold is the Sage I uh, the Sage I stronghold and the Jeskai believe that they alone understand the true nature of reality. And basically, they believe that there are six fires that light the way to enlightenment. 
White Soul Fire, Red Blood Fire, Blue Mist Fire, Black Death Fire, and Green Vital Fire. Now, Vital Fire and Death Fire, two opposite sides there, the Life and Death Fire, are actually taboo under these monks' beliefs. And mastering the other three ways, mastering the, the red, blue, and white fires actually open the way to the sixth fire, the colorless ghost fire. And that is the fire of Ugin, right? So now, everything that I've told you right there, that all no longer truly exists. That's the original timeline. That is the original timeline for the Jeskai before Sarkin went back and meddled with the timeline that actually allowed the dragons to take over. So, not really take over, but never really lose dominance in the first place. So, in the current real timeline, Ojitai actually lords over the Jeskai, and all knowledge flows through Ujitai. You have to basically worship Ujitai. Any, any people who actually have knowledge of the previous timelines, planeswalkers, things like that, anybody who finds out about that actually gets exiled from the clan. So you have a situation where this Elsha of the Infinite actually exists from the time of the original Jeskai. So if you're pulling this Elsha of the Infinite to you, through the multiverse when you're summoning her, this is actually a situation where you're pulling from a timeline that doesn't exist. And the easiest way to tell that this doesn't exist right now is if you actually take a look at the building behind Elsha, that is a original Jeskai monastery. You can see the penance flowing with the original Jeskai symbol placed there. And this is a monastery that was built up when dragons were non-existent because in the original timeline the dragons had essentially all been wiped out when Sarkin went back and undid it all the dragons were restored to their previous situation and they lorded over the entire plane so as a result places like this mystic monastery monastery wouldn't exist and you can actually if you contrast it and take a look at the artwork for mystic monastery which is from cons of Tarkir you can see the building is essentially identical. There are fewer there are fewer uh, pennants hanging from this building clearly compared to the one on Elsha, but it is the same building. And I actually I really like the flavor text on Mystic Monastery as well. It says when asked how many paths reach enlightenment, the monk kicked a heap of sand, count, he smiled, and then find more grains. That has that has that whole path of the monk vibe to it. Now Elsha is really cool. Actually, all the all the Dijin monks are really cool when it comes to the Jeskai because traditionally in Magic the Gathering, Dijin have more, or Jin, however you want to pronounce it, Dijin have mostly been the more stereotypical, like summoned from the lamp style Dijins. So you have the, the Mahamodi Dijin, right? And you can see in the Mahamodi Dijin, you can actually see someone depicted holding a lamp with the Mahamodi Dijin flowing up out of it, and the Dijin is the servant of the lamp. We have the we've had like newer incarnations of, the, of that as well. But most most Dijins are shown as servants, slaves, things of that nature. The the studious nature, the the learning style nature of these monks makes it feel like these Dijins are free willed and are just part of this clan because they seek enlightenment and knowledge as opposed to actually being enslaved Dijin. And that makes them stand right out. And you can tell the Dijin of the of the Ojitai, of the, not the Ojitai, sorry, the Jeskai, of the Jeskai, because they all have that sort of alien in human face with the horns flowing out of the back of their head and the bald head. That look is very, very distinct. And I enjoy as well how the Dijins in um, in the Jeskai are depicted in a more humanoid fashion where it's like these guys aren't flyers. They stand on the earth along with the, the rest of the members of this. It's, it's an interesting contrast to the old school style of Dijin. So Elsha of the Infinite is from a timeline that doesn't exist. But Elsha can see the future. So it does make you wonder... If Elsha was actually aware, like, is someone who's cognizant of multi-timelines? And does Elsha exist in the time of Ojitai when the timeline shifted? Or was Elsha someone who ended up being branded a heretic and destroyed?
because does the does the knowledge carry over either way i think this is a fairly potent card for five mana for a three three being able to play cards off the top of your deck and at instant speed is pretty beefy so to me this is a pretty cool flavor win i like the idea of a legendary creature pulled from a time that doesn't exist so out of curiosity what do you guys think about this card i want to give a big shout out to my patrons and channel members because honestly youtube does not give very much at all in terms of advertising revenue so my patrons and channel members do a lot for this channel thank you very much my friends and to all of you i say remember together we are the sixth color of magic